morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. It's a joy to be together. I'm very glad to be here with you. Had a late flight in last night uh, after a great trip to Washington and happy to report no travel delays. So I was able to be here with you today, which uh, is wonderful for us all. I would like to share with you a couple of announcements uh, just to highlight things that are in your bulletin. First, our Pathfinders of Good Shepherd Pogs group is meeting this Wednesday at noon in the fab. It's a potluck and uh, the uh, announcement here says that side dishes and desserts are needed. Really everything is needed. The, the meat is not being furnished so uh, we don't want you to think just bring sides, bring whatever you'd like. Uh, we need a few folks probably to bring uh, some, some more substantial food than just side dishes and desserts, so uh, make note of that. Jim Johnson is going to be presenting, so I'm excited to hear what he has to share and to share that food and fellowship with you all. Join us this Wednesday at noon. Also, the Foundation, Good Shepherd Foundation grants, the application deadline is coming up on May the 1st, so you still have time to get those grant applications in. You can read more about that. Applications are on the website uh, and on the table outside the church office in the uh, chapel area. Also, the Welker Retreat is coming up. It's been in there for a while, but we've had a lot of other announcements going on, but there's still time to sign up uh, for the Welker Retreat, um, and that is coming up in early October. I believe everything else you need is in your bulletin at this time. Let us stand as we're able for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, 
and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, 
was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord the children to join me. morning. How are you this morning? Great. How are all God's children today? Hey, come on up. How are all God's children doing? All right. Well, today we heard a story about one of my favorite characters in the gospel. We heard about a man named Thomas, and Thomas had a problem. He was not there when the others saw Jesus, and poor Thomas just wanted to see and touch what the others had gotten to see and touch. He wanted to see and touch Jesus. So I wonder where in our sanctuary today we might see Jesus or touch Jesus. Anyone have any ideas about that? Where can we see Jesus? The stained glass. We have lots of stained glass pictures of Jesus. Yes. Where else? Hmm. Look around and see. We see the symbol of the cross, don't we? And that reminds us of Jesus. What about when we touch the water in the baptismal font? We touch the waters of our baptism and we remember Jesus' promise to be with us forever, to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. How about when we have the bread and wine of communion? We get to see Jesus there, to touch and hold Jesus. We have all of these wonderful gifts, these ways that we get to see Jesus. And just as Jesus showed himself to Thomas and invited him to see and touch and believe, Jesus invites us to see him and believe as well. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of your son Jesus, for his love for the disciples, for Thomas, and for us, for the ways that he shows himself to us and is with us always. We thank you for these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson today spans two weeks, chronologically speaking. The first part of the passage takes place on Easter evening. And the second part takes place one week later. And since we're here precisely one week after our celebration of the resurrection, it's no wonder that we are assigned this passage every single second Sunday of Easter. It's no wonder we hear this passage today. But this story, the story of the risen Christ appearing to at least 10 of the disciples on Easter night and then to at least 11 disciples a week later, it's not just a once and done or twice and done occurrence. It's not just about Thomas and the others. Today's story is a story that is lived out each and every time we gather as Jesus' followers. Let's look at the story together to see how this story affects our lives and our walk of discipleship. In this story today, when Jesus first finds the church, that is, the disciples who are gathered in his name, he finds a bit of a mess. 
He finds them unsure and unbelieving. He finds them huddled in fear behind locked doors. But you know what? At least they're together. There's something about the bond between them, something about this community that Jesus created during his time on earth that has endured. It's not like the disciples all scattered and went home each by herself or himself. They are present together. They are gathered in the community Jesus gave to them. And so it is for us. We may be unsure at times. We may have trouble believing. We may even huddle in fear from time to time, but we do so together in a community of faith. Next, notice that Jesus comes among them. It doesn't matter that they don't fully believe. It doesn't matter that the doors are shut and locked. He appears. He comes among them. And Jesus comes among us here in this place when we gather. We believe he is with us in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. He speaks to us through the words of Scripture. The Holy Spirit lives within and among us here. Christ still comes to his people today and always. Next in our story, he gives peace to them, fulfilling his promise from earlier in the gospel that he will give peace not as the world gives. He does this twice on that first night with them. He also breathes the Holy Spirit onto them, again fulfilling that promise he made earlier that he would send an advocate to be with them forever. Here that promise is fulfilled, yet that promise is also fulfilled again and again and again each time we gather. The peace of Christ is a perpetual gift to the church. The Holy Spirit is our eternal guardian and guide. Again and again, the Spirit and the peace of God are bestowed upon us. Well, Jesus doesn't just give those first disciples comfort and peace, as wonderful as that is. He also gives them a mission. There is a task at hand. He says, as the Father sent me, so I send you. Well, it's no wonder, given that command, that the church needs the spirit and the peace of Christ, the presence of Christ. The Father sent the Son to love the world, to change the world, to save the world, to die for the sake of the world. Now Jesus says he is sending the church, his followers to do that same work of love of change of salvation of dying and rising we the church get to continue the work of jesus here on earth no pressure right all of this happened on that first easter evening and all of this continues to happen in the church today but Thomas wasn't with them that first night. And he stoically refused to believe unless he saw and touched for himself. We may judge him for that. We may call him doubting Thomas. We may think, I would have believed without seeing. And in a sense, I suppose we have. In a real sense, we are those upon whom Jesus bestows that blessing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. It's harder for us, I think, sometimes because we're not eyewitnesses of the bodily resurrection of Christ in the same way those first few followers were. But Thomas only wanted what the others had already seen and touched and received. And rather than dismissing him or excluding him or berating him, what does Jesus do when there is one struggling for faith? What does Jesus do for the latecomer? What does Jesus do for the stubborn and the hard of heart? He gladly appears again. 
he gives his peace to the whole community again. He reaches out in love to Thomas and invites him to fulfill his own conditions and to believe. And it turns out Thomas didn't really need to touch after all. He simply bowed down in worship before Jesus, his Lord and his God. Thomas represents more than just himself, I think. I think he represents all of us, each of us. When we struggle for faith, Jesus meets us. When we have conflict among ourselves, Jesus bestows his peace on this community again and again and again. When we ask earnestly for help and guidance, Jesus answers our prayers in his way and in his time. You see, this story takes place on Easter evening, yes, and a week later, yes, but it also takes place here and now, today, each day, each time we gather. Some among us struggle. We each have problems, troubles, doubts, fears. Jesus is here in this place to meet us at the communion rail. It's here that he says, this is my body, this is my blood, it is given and it is shed for you all. Touch and taste, do not doubt but believe. He comes to us again and again and again whenever we gather, to strengthen us individually and as a community, to give us peace individually and as a community, and to send us out individually and as a community to do his work of love and mercy, of reconciliation in the world. So this day and each time we gather, come and see, taste, touch and hear Christ. Come and believe. Amen.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially those whom we name now. God of grace, your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
to you. Not as the world gives my peace, I leave unto you. Peace, peace, peace. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives my peace I leave you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let your heart be afraid. Let not Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table.
Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad.